Oh, hello. Now that we've finished reviewing these two movies as of right now, to me, this was a masterpiece. This was a great movie. Sucks that we never got future installments. Let's talk about the next installment of the Iron Man franchise, Iron Man 2. Does this movie manage to be live up to the hype, um, become the best sequel in the series? In my opinion, well, not so much because there's so much to talk about this movie. And I gotta say, there's new characters that get introduced. Well, actually not new characters, but new, new heroes. But anyways, let's talk about this. We're gonna talk about Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2, directed by John Favreau, once again stars Robert Downey Jr., Don Cheadle, replacing Terrence Howard due to <coughs> greed, um, Scarlett Johansson, Gwyneth Paltrow, Mickey Rorick, and of course, Sam Rockwell. And with that, and without a doubt to me, um, I do like this movie, but what does suffer is mostly due to a few things, but let's not get into depth. Let's talk about Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2, the plot, it does continue exactly right after Iron Man 1, but this time we do get to see a small glimpse of a new villain, Ivan Venko, or should I say the alter ego of Whiplash. Let's just start off first with a few negatives of Whiplash. Mickey Rourke does a solid job, but then later on he becomes a bit of the dull side. I'm not saying he sucks, he's good, but how the way he gets taken down by Iron Man in just a few seconds is just to me a bit pathetic. No offense, he does his best. He does manage to kick Tony Stark's ass in a few in the Grand Prix scene about the Iron Man suit. And he does show him that he has complete hate to Iron Man. But not due to that, but due to what happened to with his father not being pretty much becoming a new scientist of the Stark Industries. And part of his projects is completely scrapped. But what happened to Whiplash's father um, suffering the death of him one made motivated uh, Ivan Venko to take revenge on Tony Stark for his success of how much not only he becomes a great adventure but making the Iron Man suit and due to the moments of Iron Man 1. The the villain does suffer itself and I could have wished Mickey Rourke would have seen him in his full potential even the deleted scene just made it even worse but then how the way he was taken down from round 1 and round 2 just bad. That gets a negative. The story itself does suffer a bit because not only does it focus how the way Iron Man just manages to become Iron Man and now that he, everybody knows who he is, now becomes a threat to Ivan Venko, but not only that too, he suffers also a sickness that is also killing him, which is the chest piece that he has in his chest. We never do discuss this in part one in Iron Man 1. That is the only reason that keeps him alive due to shrapnel being stuck to his chest. And pretty much um, the, metal, the shrapnel and the metal stuff is actually killing him. And without he, with, with that, he's trying to find himself a way not only to get a cure, but at least to live his life up to the very end. But, what su but and to me, that suffers. Robert Downey Jr. does, and for another reason, Robert Downey Jr. does give another great performance as Tony Stark slash Iron Man. He is even more likable, great jokes aside, everything else. And as for uh, the uh, supporting cast, Don Cheadle, who replaces Terrence Howard due to, <clears throat> you know why, greed, does a great performance becoming um, um, James Rhodes, or should I say Rhodey James, either one. And then later on in the line, he becomes the War Machine. And he does a complete fantastic job. And how the way War Machine looks is sick. And I gotta say, his performance is absolutely cool. Back, but Don Cheadle at least manages to become more relevant. But anyways, we do get to get a new introduction of, of a new character, a new hero, Black Widow, Scott, or played by Scarlett Johansson and she does an absolutely terrific job and I gotta say if I got into a fight with her she would kick my ass and for sure she manages to kick not only Happy Hogan's ass but er those guys in the in that one action scene in the very in the very end and I gotta say she does a complete great performances and and not only that too she's not alone in this one Nick Fury and I never get to mention Nick, um, Agent Coulson from the first Iron Man movie, who does make a uh, make an appearance, but in this one he does play a bit of a role, a bit of a small role, watching over Iron Man to see if he can manage to cure himself for the shrapnel poisoning that he's going through the chest. Um, the supporting cast is absolutely fantastic, and I gotta give I gotta give credit to the supporting cast. What doesn't live to the hype is the action scenes. We all, as everybody calculated, I watched this movie almost more than ten times. And I defend it a lot, but what sucks to me is that there was only 23 minutes of Iron Man action. We only get to see Iron Man 
jump out of a plane and see Andrew introduce everybody and introduce himself that he's Iron Man. And the second action scene of him being Iron Man, he only takes down Whiplash in less than one minute. So embarrassing, but hey, what can you do? And then the other and the other scene action scene was him kicking um, the prototype of War Machine's ass. And to me, I would have loved to see a little bit more, which was well, solid, but wasn't good. There was no good moments in the movie, and just and it just suffers for that. And the last action scenes was actually cool, but how the way he took down Whiplash. And also, um, I almost forgot another character. Um, Sam, Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer. He does a fantastic job portraying... He's only he's, he's much more of a better villain than Ivan Venko himself, Whiplash. But anyways, um, I gotta say, Iron Man 2 didn't have any good moments. Villain was completely lackluster, and the action scenes was absolutely completely lackluster. But what does save the movie was the supporting cast itself by Scarlett Johansson, Don Cheadle, Gwyneth Patrol, and of course, just um, Sam Rockwell himself as Justin Hammer. The, it was actually great, but it does suffer sequelitis. But then later down the road, we get to see also an extra, uh, an alternate credit scene of seeing that Agent Coulson, which he also does a fantastic job, seeing Thor's hammer somewhere in New Mexico. And that we get to see another new hero getting his own movie for the first time. And I was actually anticipated with this, and I gotta say that. But before we get to Thor in a, and on the next video, I'm gonna give Iron Man 2 also the same uh, the same review for Incredible Hulk, a 7 out of 10. I like the movie, but it just suffered due to lackluster action scenes because of 23 minutes of Iron Man. And not only that, too, we get to see only a few minor action scenes and due to a uh, lackluster villain. There's the only best moment of the movie to me was like the very ending. And that's about it. But anyways, next time we, when you guys watch the video, we're going to go to Thor. The very first movie, I was going to say Ragnarok, but not there yet. Who was there? Uh, and I got to say, I was really anticipated this movie. And also, does this even become better than the, the other two movies? By now, next time on Nerd of the Night.